новейшая гиперзвуковая ударная система «Орешник» в неядерном исполнении. Мы вынуждены были пойти на ее испытания в боевых условиях, именно вынуждены. Как я уже сказал, в ответ на удары западным оружием по территории Прянской и Курской областей, ракетными атаками Сейшторов Шедов. Аналогов Орешника в мире, конечно, нет. И, думаю, подобные аналоги появятся не скоро. Напомню еще раз. Напомню, как Орешник работает, как вы и просили. Десятки боевых блоков, самонедающихся блоков, атакуют цель со скоростью 10 махов. Это 10 махов. Это около 3 км в секунду. Температура поражающих элементов достигает 4000 градусов. Если мне память не изменяет, на поверхности Солнца температура 5,5-6 тысяч градусов. Поэтому все, что находится в эпицентре взрыва, разделяется на фракции, на элементарные частицы, превращается, по сути говоря, в пыль. Ракета поражает даже высоко защищенные и расположенные на большой глубине объекты. По мнению военных и технических специалистов, в случае массированного, группового применения данных ракет, то есть сразу нескольких орехов, гроздьев в одном ударе, его мощь, мощь этого удара будет сопоставима с применением ядерного оружия. Хотя оружием массового поражения орешник, конечно же, не является. Во-первых, потому что и это подтверждено испытанием 21 ноября. Это оружие высокоточное. А во-вторых, и это самое главное, здесь нет никакого ядерного заряда. А значит, и ядерного заражения после его применения. В наличии у нас сегодня имеется несколько готовых к применению изделий подобного рода. И, конечно, на продолжающиеся удары по территории России ракетами большой дальности западного производства, как уже было сказано, мы будем отвечать в том числе и возможным продолжением испытания орешников в боевых условиях, как это было сделано 21 ноября. В настоящее время Министерство обороны и Генеральный штаб Российской армии подбирают цели для поражения на территории Украины. Это могут быть военные объекты, предприятия оборонной промышленности или центры принятия решений в Киеве. Тем более, что киевский режим неоднократно пытался наносить удары по объектам государственной важности в России, по Санкт-Петербургу и Москве. И эти попытки продолжаются. Серийное производство «Орешника» началось. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, November 30th, 2024, let's get into it. I want to apologize for the last video. Uh, the color was all washed out. I mean, there's nothing worse than you go in, you, you, you spend 24 hours editing, you, you work on the video, you've put together all your clips, you put it all together, and then finally you upload it. And it's been, you know, you, you spent 15, 16, 17 hours, and then you watch it. And you're like, what the hell? What's wrong with the... Why are the colors all washed out? I mean, you know, I thought I had all my settings perfect. I, so I went back to the drawing board, and I've looked into all kinds of... All the settings that I used, I, I tweaked a couple on the phone. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. And I, 
I watched all kinds of YouTube videos which are useless pretty much because a lot of them are for iPhones. Uh, and then they always tell you, you know, these are the settings that you need to make your video for YouTube without any explanation of why you want to use those settings. And, and I'm like, well, you know, do I want to use those settings on a, on a, on, you know, for DaVinci Resolve, but when I'm editing the software for, anyway, so, so I've tweaked a couple of things and I wanted to make a quick indoor video. Uh, let me know what you think. Did I improve the video quality? Now we're going to make, I want to promote the next video. We're going to make a huge hiking video, hopefully today. Uh, we'll see. I, I, you know, I'm going to be up pretty late trying to get this video up after making this video. And that's why this is just going to be a brief video. There's not going to be a lot of clips in here. Uh, so anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's it. So let me know what you think of the video quality. All right, so we're going to get into uh, uh, the first topic uh, was that I want to talk about the Oreshnik. Oreshnik, because uh, it seems supposedly today uh, Russia is going to be striking a big target in Ukraine. Uh, and I picked up a couple of clips that you might want to know a little bit more about that missile. Let's just watch those two, and these will be the only two clips that I play in this video. Let's watch that now. Alright, so that's the Oreshnik, and then of course, you know, in the intro you saw Putin's uh, comments, a couple of videos by him, and that'll be it. So let's get into some of my replies, and then we're going to get into just a couple of posts uh, with some readings, and that'll be it for today, for this video anyway. Uh, so anyway, um, Derek Evans, I want to see George Soros stripped of his U.S. citizenship and deported. I said, you have to include Alex Soros. <laughs> he's, in, he's in charge now. Uh, even though uh, I imagine uh, George is, is, is beating his son on what he wants. Uh, uh, Simon Aktiba, do you have any thoughtful or kind words to share with Donald Trump and Melania Trump this Thanksgiving as they prepare to take on leadership of the nation in less than two months? I said, in the warmongering Democrat started wars. That's, that's uh, it. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, press secretary. I, I don't know who this person is. I tell you what, you want to talk about somebody, you think I have no life. <laughs> this person posts, I don't know, maybe she has a team of people, but she posts every freaking, and it, uh, do you hate people, I mean, if you're on X, do you hate people that always ask the question, you know, if somebody bit your toe, what would you think of that? You know, and, and you know, do, am I going to respond to something stupid question like that? And that's all they do is they ask stupid questions. And, and you're like, I, I guess they just want to get the comments so they can read comments. I never ask any st stupid questions. Well, the, if you want to say that, do you like my video quality is a stupid question, you know. But I mean, and so it just goes on and on. I, I, anyway, I said, I don't think rhinos care the American, what the people, American people think. They will vote with the Democrats. Uh, here's Dan Bongino. There's a damn good reason deep state op accounts and lib bots target my account. They should fear us. We are the media now, and our growing army is one of the few strong enough to awaken um, people to the truth. Thank you for helping me expose the truth and keep this MAGA movement uh, strong and focused. Love you guys. And then I said, amen, Dad, amen. Uh, and then we'll just read a couple more. It's truly concerning that even th on Thanksgiving Day, the first 2,000 people who commented on this post could find anything kind to say about <laughs> Harris and, 
Eshmoff. I, I think he's talking about Biden. There's probably a spelling error there. Uh, being alive today is a blessing, blah, blah, blah. Now that the elections are over, can you say something kind to this couple? Her oh, Harrison Eshmoff. M M M Hoff. Uh, that's her husband. Okay. And I said, maybe you should just watch one of my videos. <laughs> the dime did about the a mafia Democrat crime family. Oh, yeah. Uh, this was uh, Marini on the fall. Should women face treason charges? Elon, Elon, see, like I said, this is what they do. They just pose a question. Of course women should face treason charges. Yeah, and sometimes I rise to the bait. It, 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 Elon dropped a bombshell accusation against Alexander Veman. Uh, add Mark Milley, of course, well, I wanted to just say this, add Mark Milley to the traitor list that needs to be tried and if found guilty and executed, and I would put Austin in that category too. Uh, so let's, uh, let's just get to uh, my bookmarks real quick. We're just going to do a couple of readings and then that'll be it for this video. All bookmarks. All right, so here we go. So this is, uh, this is kind of a big post by uh, Tom Fenton. And uh, so I'm just going to include this here because... If you don't, I, you know, one of the things that I'll always worship is the memory of Ashley Babbitt. And uh, she'll be in my prayers tonight after making this video. Uh, and I'd like, I'd like the fact that, you know, some people haven't forgotten her. Uh, most Americans have. And so let's just read you what the latest is on Ashley Babbitt. The cop who killed Ashley Babbitt has significant disciplinary, discipline history, including gun incidents. The accounts of weapons negligence in... Rep. Louder Milk's, I guess that's, that's the guy, oh, letter, okay, it's a representative, Louder Milk's letter, are similar to accusations against Byrd in a 30 million wrongful death lawsuit filed in 2024 by Judicial Watch. So they filed a, a lawsuit on Ashley Babbitt's behalf, on the behalf of Ashley Babbitt and his late wife's estate. The lawsuit stated that when Byrd shot Ashley Babbitt, he breached multiple applicable standards of care on the safe use of a firearm, the perception and assessment of intimate threats, use of force levels, escalation and de-escalation of force, use of warnings, firing backdrops, and obtaining timely, appropriate medical aid, the suit states. Boy, that's a lot of legal lingo, isn't it? <laughs> Holy moly. Bird uh, violated Capitol Police Directive uh, 1020.004, which states that firearms may be withdrawn from their holsters only when officers are preparing for expected, prudent, and lawful discharge in order to protect themselves or others from imminent death or serious physical injury, the suit said. Uh, Lieutenant Byrd breached this standard of care by entering the demonstration at level 5, the highest level of force, unholstering firearm, and then pointing it at Ashley and others throughout the, through the window of the east lobby doors, the suit says. Lieutenant Byrd's firearm was also aimed in the direction of four officers from the USCP's elite and well-armed containment and emergency response team who had just reached the hallway, the suit says. So good for him. I'm glad to see that that's going to happen. Uh, this is just Wall Street Mav. I, I don't know who Wall Street Mav is. I guess this, I, that's their new name uh, that they're using. I think it's Wall Street Silver. I uh, think what would happen, lower rent prices and less traffic it would be awesome. And that's in response to this post. According to Booking's projection, American population could decrease by over 30% if the Trump administration issues mass deportations and closes the border. In other words, that's a Democrat, <laughs> Ian Jager, who's complaining about the fact that we're going to be deporting all the illegal aliens. And I love that response. And a lower rent prices and less traffic. <laughs> That's for damn sure. <laughs> All right, I have one more reading in here. I, well, we'll just we'll just do this one right here because I'm not going to post this video. All uh, right, if you didn't know what was going on in Ukraine, all men aged 18 to 25 in Ukraine will undergo basic military training in 2025, according to Ivan Trymenko. T-Y-M-O-C-H-K-O, Chairman of the Council of Reservists of the AFU Ground Forces. Also today, Ukrainian media reported that women who complete basic military training will be included in the register of persons liable for military service. So they're going to lower that military age uh, to send more to the front line. Uh, one last one. It's so nice to have a platform where you can say, January 6th was a Fed surrection. 
COVID originated in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Mask migration is bad. The 2020 election was not free and fair. <laughs> so, anyway, the next one uh, has a video. Let me see if I can do any more readings before we... Uh, oh, yeah, I wanted to read this one. Uh, because this is breaking news, and I want to get this out right away. Because tomorrow there will probably be more news, and I'll include that in the hiking video tomorrow. But this is on what's taking place in Syria. The warmongering Democrats, the warmongering Democrats have started another war. Can you freaking believe it? We're fighting in Ukraine. We're fighting in Israel. Okay, now we're starting a war in Syria. I'm expecting things to flare up with China before Trump can get into office. These are the war. The Democrats are the most evil people on the planet. They want war, war, war. I mean, you know, oh my God, it's just crazy. But just, let me read you Tuck Scott Ritter's, because uh, it's a great post. Uh, it gives you all the details. So here we go. The offensive against Aleppo, initiated by Turkish-allied Islamists from Hayat Tahir al-Sham, a rebranded al-Qaeda that has made common cause with, the, with ISIS. And the U.S.-allied Syrian National Army is the consequence of a strategic plan between the Israelis and Turks, backed by the Democrats, I want to say Democrats, he says backed by the United States, to cut off the supply route from Iran to Lebanon from Hezbollah, and threatened to destabilize topple the Assad government, forcing Russia to divert resources from Ukraine to salvage their position in Syria. Ukraine has provided advisors to the anti-Assad militants on drone welfare, warfare. Israel has apparently extended its explosive pager slash radio scheme into Syria as well, disrupting Syrian tactical command and control at a critical moment in the fighting. Syria has largely uh, demo demobilized and Hezbollah has mostly returned to Lebanon. Israel-backed Iraqi militias are ill-prepared uh, to contain this assault, or Iranian, excuse me, Iranian-backed Iraqi militias are ill-prepared to contain this assault. It's highly likely Aleppo will fall to the pro-Turkish Islamist, Islamist forces. There will most likely be a concerted effort led by Russia and Iran to salvage the situation in Syria. This will take time. This offensive may threaten the ceasefire in Lebanon. The biggest loser of all this is Turkey and its president, uh, Erdogan. I, I don't know, he calls it Recep, R-E-C-E-P. I'm not sure what that, I guess that's, I, I don't know, that's his title. Pre I just say President Erdogan. This offensive could not have been carried out without close cooperation and coordination with Israel and the Democrats. And he says U.S., okay. Erdogan's critical words against Israel have been exposed as empty rhetoric. Erdogan has once again betrayed Russia and his support for Palestine has been exposed as fraudulent in every way. Russia and Iran will stabilize Syria. This will take months. Syria and its allies will destroy the Islamic stronghold in Idlib. Id Idlib. Id Id this will take years. The Iran-Hezbollah supply line will be restored slash maintained. Israel will be defeated. And the United States will withdraw from Syria probably in mid-2025 and Turkey will continue to betray everyone as it does, business, it does business with because Erdogan stands only for Turkey. Well, you know, you can't, but Scott, come on. You can't blame Erdogan for standing for Turkey. I'd like Trump to stand for the United States and not for Israel. Speaking of that, got a comment talking about the uh, International Criminal Court and how they uh, convicted uh, Putin of child trafficking, more or less. I mean, if that's the way you want to look at it. When in reality, all Putin did was he got those children out of harm's way and brought them into Mother Russia. Uh, and supposedly, according to the information that I have, they're being well taken care of. Now, the point that I'm going to agree with in the comment is that the International Criminal Court is a discredited institution. Nobody pays attention to the International Criminal Court. And even though they convicted, in my last video, I said that they convicted Netanyahu and the other guy, Ben, ben uh, Berman, I can't remember. God damn, I always can't ever remember the other guy's name. It's pretty much an irrelevant conviction, other than the fact of what I'm saying is like I, people, countries like Ireland 
and other countries that adhere to the International Criminal Court say that if Netanyahu and, and Berman travel to their countries, they will arrest them. So it does have some teeth in it, even though I totally agree with the comment that the International Criminal Court is a discredited, uh, disgraced institution and nobody pays attention to them for the most part, especially the Western countries. So on that note, peace out, stay free. Russian uh, forces are supporting uh, the Syrian army in an attempt to fight back against a terrorist offensive in the north of the country. And that's amid reports militant groups have entered the major city of Aleppo. Here is aerial footage showing Syrian fighter jets destroying a motorized column in the city of Tel Rifat in Aleppo province. And the video shows a line of vehicles moving along a road through open terrain before being engulfed in a series of explosions. Now, the Russian Defense Ministry reports more than 200 militants have been killed in coordination with the Syrian army. Supporting the Syrian Arab army, Russian aerospace forces have conducted missile and bombing raids on hardware and manpower of illegal armed groups, command centers, and artillery positions of terrorists. Over the last 24 hours, at least 200 militants were eliminated. The operation to repel the extremists' aggression continues. Now, footage from the University of Aleppo shows students fleeing from the area amid reported terrorist shelling, which left four people dead. Now, there are claims that militants now control most of the city and have imposed a curfew. However, none of that information has been officially confirmed. And the government has warned civilians to avoid taking at face value claims being made on social media. Our armed forces managed to inflict severe casualties upon the attacking groups, killing and wounding hundreds of terrorists, destroying dozens of vehicles. Terrorist groups have posted misleading information, news and videos via their platforms to instill fear in the hearts of citizens. In this regard, the Supreme Command of the Armed Forces advises citizens to avoid that information. Rocket attacks on Aleppo have been intensifying for weeks, affecting both new and old neighborhoods. As mentioned earlier, there was a shelling incident that destroyed four residential buildings at the University of Aleppo, killing four students and injuring many others, most of whom fled from the dormitories. The campus administration decided to evacuate all residential buildings due to the increased threat of rocket attacks, which also affect the Al Hamdani and Al Furqan neighborhoods in the western part of the city. At this time, no clear breakthrough into the city has been recorded. However, the armed group's attempts continue amid intense artillery and airstrikes by the Syrian army on the militants' supply routes and positions. It should be noted that we are talking about a wide front line, stretching more than 100 kilometers from the northern part of the Aleppo province to the southeastern part of the Idlib province. Currently, fighting is taking place on the outskirts of Aleppo in the direction of the village of Al Mansura, located in the western part of the province. Clashes are also continuing in Sarakib, located in the eastern part of the Idlib province. The extended front line has forced the Syrian troops to request significant military resources reinforcements, but most of them are still on the way. Another part of the reinforcements has already arrived to the Syrian troops, who are trying to cope with this sudden attack and prepare for a possible counteroffensive. At the moment, the fighting continues with varying success. The Syrian army's attempts to stop militants' attacks towards the city of Aleppo have become the focus of the violent clashes taking place on the outskirts. This, in turn, has led to a mass exodus of people and the evacuation of residents from houses in the city's outskirts, which are likely to soon become the scene of violent fighting. It should also be noted that the Syrian army has completely blocked the Aleppo-Damascus highway due to ongoing clashes with militants with varying success, as a result of which the route to Aleppo is now carried out through Qanasr. This route is of strategic importance, and it can be said that communication with Aleppo as a whole has been cut off. And the main route has been redirected to a secondary road leading to the city. International affairs researcher and analyst Elamis Jadid believes that the offensive is an attempt to pressure the Syrian government and its allies Russia and Iran. 
I think it will take some time. Uh, it will be controlled, but uh, uh, many now f- 50 villages and small towns have been controlled and the highway has been cut uh, between Aleppo and Damascus. Uh, it's devastating for people who, who live there because we still have so many very painful memories of what happened between 2011-2015. Uh, we hope it will not repeat itself. Um, it seems not, but the pressure is serious this time. Uh, and uh, I think the pressure is on, um, to put it on Russia, on Iran, and on Syria, and also to retaliate the fighters of Hezbollah from, from Lebanon uh, to Syria to exhaust them. So... We are waiting. I think the Syrian army is trying to comfort uh, people around. They tell them we are in control still. Uh, The Russian also, they are helping the Russian um, military. Uh, So I hope this time it will be controlled and it will not spread into another uh, uh, war like what happened in 2011.